On today's show, right to repair the future of the MacBook Pro 13 inch, Mac MagSafe products, product name strategy, unmissable Apple stuff and more. It's all your questions, so let's do some iCave answers. Oh, and we just hit a million views. This video is supported by NordPass, letting you store all of your passwords in one place. Organize your logins and private notes in a secure password vault and access it all with a single master password. And with NordPass's data breach scanner, you can find out if your online account or credit card information has been leaked. Right now, NordPass has their spring forward sale too until June the 1st, 2021. So my audience can get 70% off NordPass at nordpass.com forward slash iCave or use the code iCave plus, you'll get an additional month of NordPass for free. Thank you to NordPass for sponsoring this video. Yes, we hit a million views. I I didn't have money for fireworks, but I thank you all so much for watching the videos. Really, really appreciate it. And I thought we should probably mention Notification Squad, which we've not done for a while. But Matt Chesterton joined our Notification Squad, which basically means he uh, subscribed to the channel, rung the notification bell, and then let me know using hashtag Notification Squad down in the comments. And you can get a shout out in our next video by doing the same thing. Thanks, Matt. But let's get into the questions. Uh, these are all from submissions in the comments section using hashtag iCaveAnswers, and uh, I'll answer your questions for you about Apple stuff. Seems fair. James Apple asks, iCaveAnswers, right to repair and the problem it has with Apple users going to your favorite part convinced store. Because I would believe for every Linus Tech, MKBHD, Lewis Rossman, and others is good for them. However, people who aren't experienced with what part goes where and the slight mistake can be detrimental to their health and could wreak havoc of lawsuits being attributed on a massive scale in the courtroom. Apple hates dealing with lawsuits of any kind. Want to know your thoughts on it? So yeah, right to repair. This is one of the things that comes up again and again in the questions, but yes, a lot of it is about Apple trying to limit their liability. They don't want a whole bunch of independent repair shops that don't know what they're doing trying to desolder individual chips, all that sort of stuff. Now, Louis Rossman, he has got really good points. I don't agree with everything that he says, um, but these things are designed to be like appliances. When you have a toaster that breaks, you probably buy a new toaster. There's not many people that take their toaster to the repair shop and try and get new coils put in it, new, you know, all that sort of stuff, because they're not cost effective to repair in that way. Now I understand that iPhones and Macs and stuff like that are far more expensive but at the same time Apple does offer a very good system in terms of Apple Care, where you can basically insure your devices for a, a decent amount of time and you take it back to them and if there's any problems they give you a new one basically because it's just much easier for them to give you a new one than to try and repair it on site but what they will then do is then they will take that they will refurbish it, they will uh, replace any parts that need to be replaced, and it will look as good as new, and they will sell it on their refurbished, shop, uh, refurbished store. Or they will repair it and have it ready for someone else to uh, replace their device. I 100% see both sides of this coin. I understand that people like to be able to repair their stuff. I understand that people used to be able to uh, tinker with cars a lot more than they can now, but cars have got a lot more stuff in them than they used to have. Like, your car has got sensors that measure pretty much everything in there they measure the airflow they measure the fuel flow they measure pretty much everything that's going on and that's why now when you open the uh, the bonnet or the hood of your car you see a big piece of plastic that kind of covers all of the gubbins because you know it doesn't want to look too complicated whereas you used to be able to get your hands in there and you used to be able to pull stuff out but guess what cars are better now than they used to be and exactly the same thing happens with max now you can still do basic stuff on your car you can still replace your oil you can still do all of that kind of thing and you can still do the same sort of things with your mac that's the equivalent of doing your disc repairs and reformatting hard drives all that kind of stuff it's not practical for people to be able to kind of pull everything apart on a car nowadays in the same way that because everything's so much more integrated and all works as more of a closed system now it's better to actually have people that know what they're doing do it now i'm not saying that people shouldn't be able to replace a screen i'm not saying that people shouldn't be able to replace a battery all of that stuff should be the equivalent of your oil change or a windscreen replacement on a car these things are all still doable 
and I think that Apple has made some wrong decisions in in terms of serializing displays and making batteries really hard to get to but also if every repair shop is pulling iPhones apart and getting the batteries out what happens to the waterproofing that your phone has like the the water resistance rating that's going to disappear then you're going to use your iPhone thinking it's exactly as it was before all of a sudden it's going to stop working due to water damage and you're going to blame Apple because it says it's waterproof but it's been opened now by someone that's not Apple and doesn't know what they're doing or might not know what they're doing no like not all repair shops are the same but because Apple doesn't have control of how these repair shops do their repairs that's where we get issues so I think that is what we need to kind of bear in mind with all of this stuff so Apple wants you to be able to repair your devices it just wants to know that the repair is good that's my thoughts at least but but let me know down in the comments what you think Matt Chesterton asks I cave answers I had a bit of an epiphany about that new colored MacBook in relation to the consumer pro grid theory, and I was wondering what you thought the odds were of this new design replacing the entry level MBP 13 inches M1 in the new lineup. Essentially keeping the pro tag for the 14 inches and 16 inches models and placing this new design above the MBA 13 inches for cost instead of below? Right, this is a really tricky question because we don't know exactly what that is, but my thoughts because from what I've seen of those leaked design specs, there is a 13 inch MacBook Air that's on the way that also has the MagSafe on it. And that is the one we would expect to get the mini LED display eventually. This looks like a more budget option because it's got the very flat sides, the very flat square design, rather than the MacBook Air's wedge shape, which is also more comfortable to type on. So that was part of the reason that I thought this is probably more of a budget uh, design because it doesn't have that MagSafe uh, adapter on it either, but we will see. It's also got the smaller trackpad, which one thing that I haven't mentioned in the past, I don't think, uh, I was wondering if that smaller trackpad that uh, is now sort of shorter, but still just as wide, which looks very much like it might be 16 by nine in ratio, could actually be to support Apple Pencil as a drawing tablet that's one-to-one -one scaled to the display. So that could actually be like a mini drawing tablet as well as being the trackpad. Apple hasn't really developed the trackpad stuff for quite some time, so I think that would be an interesting thing. But as I say, we don't know. This could be the new MacBook Air. I think it looks like a new MacBook rather than a MacBook Air, and a lot of other people have said the same thing, so we'll see. There's nothing we can kind of do about this until it arrives, um, and that's most likely not going to be until October or November this year. Ahus asks, IK Vancers, here's a thought. If the MacBook nothing, linking face is so thin, could it have wireless MagSafe like the iPhone 11 and 12 etc? Rather like possibility of a portless iPhone, could we get a MB with only Thunderbolt ports and no dedicated charging port? This is an interesting point. I've wondered about Apple bringing the wireless MagSafe, the, the kind of magnetic uh, attachment that doesn't have physical ports on it, but because they're limited to 15 watts, it's very unlikely that that will be enough to charge and use your device at the same time. So you'd be able to kind of keep the battery topped up, but you wouldn't actually be able to increase the charge on it while you're, uh, while you're using it. So that would be difficult. But also, it only charges at 15 watts at peak. So once you get to over 50% full, I think, on the battery, it actually steps down a little bit so that it reduces heating and things like that. So... I don't think it's a practical option for the uh, for the MacBooks. I don't think it would be. Apple might be able to increase that charging rate because there are wireless chargers out there that have more. The other issue with charging a MacBook through uh, a wireless charger like this would be the fact that it's made of metal and you can't charge wirelessly through metal because the metal gets in the way um, and would absorb those kind of magnetic fields, inductive charging waves, which is a, a bit of an issue. Aluminium, obviously not magnetic, and I believe there's a phone out there that kind of says that it's metal-backed and still charges wirelessly, but I have a feeling they're doing some uh, some very either very thin metal, which would also make it less sturdy, or it's actually kind of metal-coloured with a kind of plastic bit inserted. So we'll see, but uh, yeah, don't think they're going to be going to wireless MagSafe without the kind of metal contacts on it for the MacBooks. Team Kinetics asks... IK Vancers, what naming convention do you think Apple should use across their product line? So this comes back to what we were talking about on yesterday's show, where we were talking about like what is the cheap one, what is the 
premium? What does Air mean? What does Pro mean? What does SE mean to Apple? And there's a few people that have been talking about this as well in the comments. So I think the SE should probably be a discount point rather than the baseline. So I think we could actually have four levels almost if we were going to include that. So you'd have your MacBook would be your baseline, which is your current chip, but in a, a basic form. So you get kind of everything that you need, uh, but without all the perky bits. So, for example, with the MacBook, you would get the MacBook, which would have the current processor, so let's say M1 right now, uh, but you wouldn't get things like a mini LED display, you wouldn't get things like MagSafe maybe, which is kind of like a luxury charge port perhaps, but you would get the nice keyboard, you get the backlit keyboard, that kind of thing. Then you go up to your Air, which might get the mini LED display, it would still have Touch ID, it would have the nicer design that's a little bit more ergonomic with the uh, wedge shape. And then you would go up to your Pro, which had the more powerful chip. It would have all of the bells and whistles with the better display, the uh, potentially the OLED keycaps um, across the top, replacing that touch bar that we're getting rid of, and a few other kind of bells and whistles. And then if there's an SE model, that would actually be using a slower processor. So perhaps that could be using, at the moment, an A14 chip, but going forward, it would probably have the M1 once M2 comes out for the rest of the range. So that would be my thought. That would also make sense then for the iPad range. So we should have an iPad that comes out with the older design, but A14. We should then have uh, iPad Air that comes with A14 and the new style design language and maybe some other kind of bells and whistles. Maybe if they were to put Face ID on the iPad Air, that would be awesome. And then you get your iPad Pros that have the M series chips, which is the super powerful version, like what the A14X used to be. And then if you wanted the iPhone SE, that would be your one that comes with the A12 processor, like we have in the iPad. Now, it is very confusing. This is the problem with having different naming schemes across the different ranges. So I do think it's important that iPad and MacBook line up in what they're going to call stuff, but then at the same time you're going to have the iPad Pro that has the base Mac chip in it, and then the regular iPads have the iPhone chip. It's so confusing. Evan Rogers asks, I cave answers. I cave answers, Dave. What is the one Apple product likely to be released within the next two years that you simply will have to buy, and why? Well, unfortunately, as a, a, an Apple channel, most of them, probably, um, like, I'm not going to be buying every design of uh, Mac that comes out, but once an M1X chip comes out, if they put that into a Mac Mini, I will probably get have to get one, because I need to see what this power is like in comparison to the M1 that we have right now, and uh, and then probably this Mac Mini will either go up for sale, but depending on what the resale looks like, if it's going to be under, like, 400 ish instead of the 600 ish that I paid for it it will probably stay here to run the beta versions of stuff because Apple always says don't uh, install the beta versions on your um, production devices which makes a lot of sense but if I was able to install the beta versions on this and then keep my M1X for the actual production that would make a lot of sense but in terms of other Apple devices that we think are going to be coming out if they bring out some new AirPods, I will pick them up because they're not super expensive. They're quite uh, affordable and my AirPods have been through the laundry. Uh, they went through the full wash and the dry cycle, uh, which kind of, uh, they're not the same shape that they used to be. Let's put it that way. One of the microphones in them is a little bit uh, wet sounding, let's say. Um, so a new pair of AirPods, uh, when a new version comes out, I will probably pick up. Um, but the one thing that will probably come out in the next couple of years, but we don't know, is some sort of glasses. Whether it's the Apple Glass or the VR thing. If it's three grand, I might not, because this is not a big channel yet. But if I can afford it, I will. So in summary, something with M1X and some sort of glasses. Um, but I also would quite like to have a laptop that I can use uh, when I'm out and about so maybe if there's an, uh, a MacBook SE that does come out, or maybe an M2, we'll see. It depends what the pricing is like again. Daniel Corby asks, IK Vancers, with rebranding naming, in 10 years, do you think we'll still have iPhones or will we have an red Apple? 
phone? Obviously this wouldn't just be a small transition phone. And the iPad would need to transition at the same time. Yeah, we're talking a lot about naming conventions and stuff at the moment. I think when we're looking at 10 years out from now, um, phone might not be a thing that we care about. Like, I know it's a, a weird concept right now. Uh, and looking back, I mean, we're only 14 years since iPhone existed. Um, and the way that the paradigms change so quickly, the iPhone came out in, what, 2007? Um, I didn't have a phone at all, like a mobile phone until 2000 which is when I went to uni. Before that, we just used landlines. Like when I was uh, when I was in college and stuff, I just didn't have an, a, a mobile phone. We didn't need them. Uh, obviously, things have changed now where that's kind of the most important device in most people's lives, which makes sense. But in 10 years, it might be something completely different. I think if they're going to change naming conventions, it will be when the folding version of iPhone comes out. And I think the way that it might happen is... Like, somebody's mentioned that iBook might be a really good name for a folding iPhone. I think that's a really good idea, and I think it was Evan. Like, that might be the point where they change what they call the device. Maybe it becomes Apple Fold or something like that. I don't know, but I think that would be a good switchover point if they want to get away from the i prefix on stuff, which I'm not sure that they do for some of the products. I think i something still makes sense when it's so established. I don't know if iBook is what they will go with. I don't know if iPad will stay around. Um, maybe it will become Apple Pad. But that just sounds clunky compared to iPad. Um, but then nobody thought it was going to be called iPad when it first came out because that also sounded weird. People get used to names. The name uh, doesn't really matter. So thank you all for your questions. If you've got a question, hashtag iCaveAnswers down in the comments section and make sure that you've subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss your answer. And if you're going to do that, you might as well put hashtag notification squad down there and get another shout out. Everyone likes a shout out. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.